show you how to do a study for a figure painting. All right, so I have this canvas. It's This is a linen canvas that, that has been glued to cardboard. There's a, a few different brands that make some really nice quality linen panels or canvas panels, and I've linked to them uh, in the description below. I love this type of canvas because it doesn't take up a lot of space. Now the point of doing a, a study like this is just to work out uh, any potential problems that might arise when uh, finally working on a, a larger painting. So obviously you see the, the photograph here that I have that I'll be working off of. And as I begin this, um, okay, primarily I'm, I'm not drawing this figure in. I may do some uh, drawing studies as well, but I'm not concerned with, with getting a specific, um, uh, you know, drawing outlines, any of that stuff is, is not my concern right now. I just want to test out the composition, the lighting, maybe play with a little bit of textures and just see what is it that is, is really going to work with this painting. Composition is a really big one because as you work on it, you might realize that the canvas should be a different size. And while you can change the canvas, uh, you can at least you know crop it a little bit more. That is a lot of work, and I don't like to have to restretch a canvas once I've painted on it. So to begin this, I just am really right now working with uh, very basic shapes. I'm trying to get the just a almost like a blob of the the figure get a sense of where she sits within this space. I'm monochromatic at this point using only transparent oxide red, I'm not mixing it with anything else, just a lot of turpentine to, to keep it real runny. The, the, the runniness of it is, um, it, it helps with some of the, the texture buildup, the, the overall style that, that I'm after. It's also helpful for um, the longevity of a painting. If the painting is begins with very thin layers and the thick layers are added at the very end, so you may have heard the term called fat over lean or fat over thin, this helps with paintings not beginning to crack too much. You hope for your painting to last, you know, many, many lifetimes longer than you, then it's important to uh, paint uh, very thin at first. So I'm adding a, a little bit of extra color here just to you know, give me the, this, this sense of separation from what the figure is. Right now the figure is just a big blob. All right, now it's time for a little bit of a thicker paint. And well, first just to establish a bit more of texture, a bit more of, of seeing where this figure is testing out a little bit of a style approach um, which comes up with the which will will come out in the texture of the paint the application of the paint so I also want to rehearse the uh, the, the handling of the skin tone especially in the back because this is one area that does demand so much attention one of my issues with this painting is the, the the sort of conflict of attention that I see that happens here. Uh, there's this this area of the skirt is this sort of empty space. The high heels, the ankles, the calves. This grabs attention. Well, it certainly does for me. I think they're beautiful calves and ankles and nice shoes. But the back is definitely the most uh, the strongest focal point. That said, it's a little bit distracting that there's this one focal point and then the attention breaks the where the skirt is. There's this big broken area and then there's this subsidiary focal point of the shoes and the ankles. So I want to explore how do I handle this before I start investing the time, the paint on a larger canvas. I want to see 
will this work as a larger painting? When I say broken, this means that the because of the tonality, the light color, the attention, uh, doesn't have a fluid movement through the painting, but lands immediately because of the lines all draw your attention to the back and obviously because of the color the contrast but also the lines within the picture now what i'm doing so far is um, i'm already bringing in a little bit of detail uh, a lot of times in a painting maybe you'll do these details at the very at the very end but sometimes one of the details i think are important to, for, for me, just to uh, develop where the attention is going to be uh, resting the most. So I do have this very delicate strap um, for the shirt that goes across your back and beginning to bring in the, the details of the back. I'm also playing with uh, the very subtle color temperatures here. So when painting from a photograph, a photograph tends to flatten out the color temperature. Everything tends to either be cool or warm. And when you're looking at something in life and studying it, especially from a painting, you'll see that there tend to be these opposites where the, the shadows are very cool, which usually they are, but they also might be very warm. Then the lighting will in fact be the opposite. Um, so in this case there are just the slightest blue hue in, in the, the, the highlights. What I'm finding is that if I was to paint it with the, the same amount of, of darkness all around her that I definitely have a more of a problem with the, um, the, the conflict of interest with the, the legs to the back. Now in this painting right now I'm aware that the the legs are painted too uh, brightly and that's okay at this point I have a clear sense of, of what's needed for this um, but I do want to play a little bit with what sort of textures I will create in, in the paint for the background the wood the the floor um, you know how much will it be sort of the, the canvas poking through with with runny paint how much will be thick paint uh, and, and what colors uh, do I really need to focus on because some of that's going to be very important to uh, help pull the attention where I want the attention to go. Something to always think about in every painting you make. You are essentially directing the viewer's eyes. So often you might not even think about this. That's, that's pretty normal. A lot of artists don't really consider that for a while. but you are you're, you're conducting uh, the viewer's gaze so when you do this purposefully it's it can be really rewarding when it works well um, and you can do this with the the shapes the line work um, and the angles of the shapes and of course the the actual coloring as well the the tones the the difference of the colors do they conflict do they um, homogenize together or to sort of all blend in together and um, and the more you you play with this the more you can see you just if you trust where your eyes are landing don't force them to look at what you think they should look at but look at the painting as you're painting it especially with one of these study pieces and just see where your eyes naturally fall and often what will happen is that they will land somewhere, but just before they land there, they will take a little journey around the canvas. So this is the study of the painting, a painting called Bannister. If this has been helpful to you, please let me know if you approach your studies uh, differently or if you've never done studies at all. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, any questions, comments, uh, just put them in the comment section below. And if you like this, please do subscribe and you'll see more. Thanks for watching.